just wanted to quickly talk about fuel cells. Fuel cells are one of those things that come up every now and again in the media. They've always been, for as long as I can remember, they've been the technology of the future when it comes to zero emission driving. And I mean, there's this sort of a running joke that uh, they're the technology of the future and they always will be. But equally, many, many people in the general public believe that fuel cells are going to be the eventual end point for automotive um, transport. And I mean, I don't believe that that's the case. So I thought I would just quickly make a small video just detailing why I'm pretty sure that EVs are going to be the future. And they're also the present to some extent, which which always helps. Whereas I don't think fuel cells will actually ever get there. And fundamentally, the the major problem with fuel cells is the physics of them doesn't work well. Not for cars, at any rate. Um, the fundamental problem is that hydrogen is such low density that you require a huge pressure to store enough of it in order to drive three, four hundred miles. And there's, it's very unlikely that we will be able to build hydrogen tanks that are powerful enough to hold back twice the pressure, which means that you won't be able to double that range up to six to eight hundred miles. And with EVs, at the moment, you can get an EV that, at least on paper, says it'll do 300 miles, that's the Tesla, or actually 400 miles if you look at the updated um, uh, Roadster, which I don't think anyone's actually got an updated Roadster yet, but when the 3.0 update for the Roadster actually comes out, there will be Roadsters out there that'll do 400 miles, and, and that's current battery technology now. But from a physics standpoint, the theoretical limit um, of the amount of power that can be crammed into an EV battery uh, using lithium is, I, I'm fairly confident it's, you know, uh, can yield a range of over a thousand miles. So even if only half of that is actually practically achievable, you know, using nanospheres of carbon as the anode or, or whatever the eventual <coughs> solution winds up being, 500 miles of range versus 400 for a hydrogen vehicle and then you've got the massive problem of infrastructure the hydrogen filling stations cost somewhere between five and ten times as much money as a uh, EV quick charger yes they do work a lot quicker so they can serve more cars in a day but the biggest problem is you can't fill your hydrogen vehicle at home so you're not going to wake up in the morning with a full tank you're going to have to drive to a station to fill up before you go on to do the rest of your day's errands so from a purely practical point of view you need far more stations an EV on the other hand only really needs quick chargers that are going to be used for long journeys because you start every morning with a full battery um, and that difference in, in usefulness without needing a dedicated infrastructure is a large part of the reason why EVs, you, I mean, I would happily and have obviously bought an EV too, in fact, I would never buy a hydrogen vehicle. There would be no point. I would have nowhere to fill it. It's that simple. <clears throat> and even if there was a hydrogen station just down the road from where I live, I wouldn't be able to drive it to Scotland. I wouldn't be able to drive it to Italy. It it just wouldn't it wouldn't do anything except the most local driving. And I know um, Toyota is under the impression that they're going to install hydrogen filling stations all over the country, and you know that may well work very well for them. But the amount of money that is required and the time and the planning that's necessary to build out that infrastructure means that by the time they've actually got it up and running and they've started selling cars in the tens of thousands instead of the hundreds, EVs are going to be driving around with four or five hundred mile ranges and 
high powered quick chargers that will fill the car to 80-90% in under an hour will be everywhere so it just it'll never never be able to compete is my is my feeling when it comes to hydrogen and, and fuel cells and so I think when Elon Musk calls them fuel cells I think he's he's probably more or less got it right I mean he one of the things I quite like about the way he thinks and rationalizes his various different uh, business decisions is he likes to look at things from a first principles point of view and as a first uh, at, in first sort of principle terms I think he's he's quite right fuel cells don't stack up for automotive because they're very low because the hydrogen is very low weight I think they can make sense for the upper stage of rockets and things at least that's what Elon says and I'm just going to bow to his uh, superior rocket knowledge there but when it comes to cars the, the problem is is the volume of space required and the in order to store that hydrogen and it's it's this it's these physical limitations on what can be achieved that I think will really tell over time because by the time an EV can do 500 miles on a battery it will be not very it won't be there will be a huge premium on a thousand horsepower five seat sedan so but you will have that premium still if you want extra power with a fuel cell because with a fuel cell it's you might have slightly more energy capacity at least at the beginning but you've got a lower delivery power delivery the Toyota Mirai for example I think is a hundred kilowatts which is ugh, I actually think that's a little bit less than a Nissan Leaf if I remember correctly I think the Nissan Leaf was something like 108 kilowatts oh no no sorry I'm lying the, the Nissan Leaf was 80 kilowatts but 80 kilowatts that's a Nissan Leaf the uh, Tesla Model S I think is 300 and something 320 kilowatts rings a bell so a considerably more power and you know the price is not all that dissimilar and it's a much more practical car because you don't have hydrogen tanks all over the place and a big fuel cell stack that takes up room in the front I mean just it doesn't matter how you look at the technology when you actually start to compare it you know, the Toyota Mirai that isn't actually on sale yet versus the Tesla Model S that's been on sale for a couple of years. And at least to my mind, it, it seems like a no-brainer that fuel cells aren't going to get there. I think the only reason people think they will is because they look at the concept of a fuel cell and it seems familiar to them. Oh, they've got a tank, they go to a petrol station, called a hydrogen station in this case, they stick a nozzle in their car and five minutes later you're good to go. And that's that's what they are, what they under, what people understand and are comfortable with. But just because what they understand and are comfortable with today, and yeah, you know, and hydrogen is you know fits what they're comfortable with today, that doesn't necessarily mean that that will be the future. I and mean, people change uh, their their habits and and the way they work much more often than they think they do. Anyway, that's, that's my thought of the day on hydrogen fuel cells. To uh, sort of read more about it, if you click through to my blog, I wrote a, an article about it, which is a little bit more uh, of, an, of an expansive version of some of the points I've just gone over in this video.